Coming up next, a full review of Ormond Mad by Ormond Jane. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. This is Joel the Nose coming to you from Miami as usual. And today I'm doing a full review of Ormond Mand, Man by Ormond Jane. And this is a the first actual release from the Ormond Jane house for the masculine uh, market or for a masculine fragrance. This was released in 2004, so this is one of their very first ones. They did Ormond Woman and Ormond, Ormond Man, and this is a classic if you like the Ormond Jane house. So I have a sample of it here. You can see I love their samples. They always put a lot of thought into it. You can see the bottle, by the way. All their bottles look the same, or most of their bottles look like that. They have some, some different ones, but that's traditionally what they look like. Very classic, clean British style. I love it. Very simple, very understated. It's all about the juice. Um, Ormond Man, uh, you, I did, you may remember if you've seen, I did a review of Ormond Elixir, which is essentially an updated version of Ormond Man and Ormond Woman. I think more so of Ormond Woman. If you look at the notes, it's mostly an update of Ormond Woman with a lot more oud. Uh, this has oud in it, but I think only a touch, and I'll talk about that in a second. Elixir, and again, I'll put a card up with my review there. Elixir had a lot more oud in it. So clearly oud is a lot more popular today. So I think that's why one of the reasons they probably updated it. This came out in 2004. It's a masculine fragrance. Uh, the, the, again, the house is Ormond Jane, classic British house founded by Linda Pilkington, the, the creative director. Um, you've heard me talk about Zizon probably. That's my signature scent, Zizon. I love it. So I've reviewed a number of their fragrances and I really love this house. Uh, Ormond Man, this is the first time I've gotten to wear it, actually. Uh, the nose behind it, the perfumer, is Giza Schoen, who's done a bunch of stuff for Ormond Jane, including Zizon. So there you have it. Um, and let me read the notes for you. Uh, the top notes are juniper berry, bergamot, pink pepper. The heart notes are oud and black hemlock. And the base is vetiver, cedar, sandalwood, and musk. So that is uh, the materials behind it. As I mentioned, I have a sample. I have a decant here. Um, so I've been wearing this for nine hours already today. I'm going to give a little spray so you can see my initial reaction uh, when I spray it. Okay. Wave it around. Boom, boom. Okay. Ooh. Okay, makes me sing. I love it. Uh, this is very unique. This is very, again, for I think a British house. I love what they do. It's like it's like a mix of modern classic, but with the oh, I'm sorry, a classic fragrance, but more of a modern twist. My initial impression off this first punch <clears throat> is juniper berry and cardamom and the pink pepper. It comes across to me as a little fruity. From the juniper berry, a little sweet, a little punch and spicy from the, the pepper and the cardamom. And cardamom to me also comes across as almost a fizzy, a little bit sweet. Interestingly, I'm not getting the, um, the, the bergamot at the top. I'm not getting that citrus smell on my skin. You know, it'd be interesting to hear if anyone else has smelled this, whether they get that bergamot. But to me, I don't really smell the bergamot. And it's actually a little bit nutty. And that's interesting. And, and so from... My understanding of materials, that's coming from the cardamom, which can have, to some people, a nutty-like quality, and I'm getting that in this initial punch or the initial smell. I don't, interestingly, get any oud. This was re released 15 years ago, so I'm guessing that 15 years ago, oud, especially in the United States, was barely used at all. I know it was used more overseas, so I bet you they only put a, punt, a, a, a touch in, and I bet you they used it as a complimentary note. And... For those of you who don't know what a complimentary note is, that's when you just add in a punch of something that's usually very strong and dominant like oud or civet or, you know, maybe even ambergris or castorium. Something that's going to give it, that you're not even going to necessarily detect it, <clears throat> but what it does is it helps in the fixative nature or, or the blending of the notes or 
you know, just the rounding of the notes or bringing things together. I think that's what they did here. That would be my personal guess because I don't smell the oud anywhere throughout the, fran the, the fragrance. And in the updated version of Elixir, which just came out in the last year, I smelled a ton more of oud. So I think they put a lot more in at that, you know, in the new release. Um, so after about an hour of wearing this today, it got a little bit more powdery. I think for me, that's sandalwood. Sandalwood always comes across to me as a little powdery. Uh, but it also was a little bit spicy and warm, a little sweet, uh, and a unique smell. I think that's from the hemlock. Uh, I noticed the hemlock, which is in the elixir, uh, that it's, it's something that I'm not used to, so it kind of stands out to me. It did here also. I like it. It's different. It's just, you know, not something I'm used to, but I really enjoyed it. And after about two to three hours, it kind of goes into the base. And once it hits that base, it's a nice progression from the top to bottom. It's a, very, it's a unique, not linear but a complex composition. When it goes into the base, the base is all day. And it is four juggernauts. Vetiver, cedarwood, sandalwood, and musk. And it's warm, it's sweet, it's creamy, it's like creamy goodness on your skin. And I love all four of those elements, although sandalwood's typically not my favorite, but like I say, all four stand out. I swear I can smell one, two, three, four of those base elements here somehow perfectly blended together. I, I don't know how they did it, but to me it comes across, and I've been wearing it again as I always do. I spray in the back of my hand once, once on either side, inside of my elbows, either side of my neck, and back of my neck. And here we are nine hours later, and it's still coming across as a very, very strong skin scent. So this is great quality, long lasting. As far as the sillage and the projection, I'm gonna give a caveat as I always do when I use decants. Um, you just don't get the same spray because you don't have the good atomizer and so there you don't get the, the same coverage in your skin Therefore, I never get good projection or sillage when I use a decant um, Having said that that's why I don't want to comment on it because I want to be on the up and up and fair and Make sure my comparisons are equal if I have an atomizer from a real bottle Then I will discuss sillage and projection. I'm guessing it's going to be good just because this is a the longevity is beast mode We're talking nine hours now still going strong okay um so that is uh just looking at my notes making sure i didn't forget anything guys remember i am a lawyer so i like to be thorough and detailed um and try to provide you as much information as i can again just to, to note although oud is listed here to me it's not nearly as prevalent as in elixir the updated uh recent version uh i think this is a beautiful classic ormond jane scent no wonder uh it's stuck around now for 15 years this is probably something you should have in your collection as now i would consider basically like a classic there you have it uh my full summary and review of orman man by orman jane from 2004. if you have any comments if you smell this if you have it please i'd like to hear your your comments agree disagree with my opinions or any additions to what i said i love the input Thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. If you're thinking about subscribing, I really appreciate it. Give it a shot. And I hope that I'll continue providing content that you'll find useful. And uh, like, comment, share, whatever you want to do. This is Joel the Nose coming to you from Miami. And I hope everybody has a great day.